The ancient Flinders Ranges in South Australia are the stunning backdrop for a program that has been transforming troubled kids' lives since 1991. In May this year, I had the fortune to visit Operation Flinders for myself and witness its magic. And, like most of the participants in the program, I came home changed. Operation Flinders is a program for kids at risk of offending or disengaging from school or home. So it takes young men and women aged 14 to 18 out of their usual and often difficult environments and gives them the opportunity to experience success and achievement in ways that they may never have experienced before. Some of these young people have never had a trusted adult relationship. Some of them are barely literate and others have never before had the chance to stretch themselves or to take risks in a safe environment. And so it was that I was invited to go and one Saturday in May I boarded a light plane with some other lucky visitors for an hour and then took a bumpy bus ride until I arrived in a place that was a world away from Adelaide at Yankanina Station, located in Undimutna country, the headquarters of Operation Flinders. And there we found a veritable hub of activity. The team that coordinates the safe operation of exercises that take place monthly for most parts of the year, except the extremely hot months um, in South Australia, uh, for nine teams of up to 10 young people at a time. In the supplies shed, we found racks of backpacks, piles of supplies, maps and charts and radio equipment. And we saw that these were all overseen by a small army comprised of a few paid staff and many, many committed volunteers who work as team leaders, exercise commanders, SA ambulance paramedics, communications and operations officers, cooks and drivers. And this is the logistical marvel that we came to know as Base Camp. The young people, the participants, on the other hand, remain blissfully unaware of the degree of work that goes on behind the scenes to make their experience so amazing. All they know is that after a long drive by bus, they arrive in the bush with their teammates and a counsellor, usually a teacher or school counsellor. They've been selected by their school or community organisation as being likely to benefit from the program. So they're handed a backpack with some basic sleeping, camping and wet weather gear, and I mean very basic, and they set off with experienced team leaders, heading off on a physical and psychological challenge that takes eight days and is over more than 100 kilometres. By the end of the trek, these young people have done many unfamiliar things, like making camp, cooking their own food, climbing mountains, abseiling down a rugged cliff, They've done team building tasks and they've met with people from the local Undermutnya community who share dreaming stories and traditional food with them around a campfire. This is a process that challenges them greatly and encourages them to achieve things way beyond their expectations. And over the eight days they come to rely on trustworthy adults, sometimes for the first time in their lives and they experience the reward and power of supporting and depending on each other. The program is designed to fire their imaginations too through some playful and creative aspects that stimulate them to think about new possibilities for what life could hold for them. I witnessed one of them, and I'm not at liberty to disclose it, a particularly interesting and fun aspect of the program because that would be giving the game away and I was sworn to secrecy, but it was delightful and effective to see. Throughout the course of their adventures, these young people begin to believe, if I can do that, I can do anything. The results are very impressive. An evaluation in 2001 showed Operation Flinders performed highly against best practice benchmarks around the world for this kind of transformative wilderness program. There were significant improvements in areas of self-esteem, school behaviour, social attentiveness, and self-confidence. And criminogenic factors such as anger, attitudes towards police and identification with criminal activity were reduced. But academic studies aside, we visitors saw convincing evidence of the magic at work when we met some individual teams and young people who were highly enthusiastic, in fact even euphoric in some cases, about their experiences and what they'd been achieving in their team. 
It's important to emphasise that this is not rat camp or boot camp. I was struck by the overwhelming principles of respect and compassion that were reflected in everyone I met and all aspects of the operation. Around a campfire, we at base camp on Saturday night met many of the long-serving volunteers, people who had been serving over decades in some cases, who regaled us with moving tales of young people who had been transformed by the experience over the years. And the one phrase that sticks in my mind that I heard most often was, we do this for the kids. The program has a resident psychologist, Doug, who explained to me that the participants typically pass through four stages over the course of the eight days in the program. Initially, there's what they call a storming phase. They, they're excited, they volunteer to do the program, but when they get there, it's extremely hard and it's like nothing they've ever experienced before. So they complain about the physical aspects and they rebel. They're not used to taking um, it's instructions. They're not used to accepting authority, so they rebel and in some cases they try running away. The next phase is what is called the norming. So that was the storming, then there's the norming, which is really just a period of a few days where they adjust and they start to understand that these are the limits and this is what they need to uh, undergo. Then comes the performing stage, which is really the height of the program when they're working together as a team, they're contributing and cooperating and experiencing achievement and starting to feel, for some of them, the first time they've really experienced success in their lives. And then the fourth stage is actually the mourning phase as they contemplate leaving leaders that they've come to trust and admire and their teammates and coming to terms with the fact that they will have to return to what are often challenging life circumstances. But what these young people do take home with them is their powerful new knowledge of what they are personally capable of and the possibilities that the world can offer them. Everywhere in Operation Flinders, it's clear that the welfare of the kids is paramount and the emphasis is on encouraging them to understand that they've accomplished something that entitles them to belong to the Operation Flinders family. Before leaving, all the participants receive a T-shirt and a dog stamp Tam dog tags, sorry, stamped with an 1800 number that they take with them to keep forever. They can ring the number if they're in trouble or want to contact the Foundation staff, and they've had previous participants who've actually rung them over years to contact the staff and get some support. For some participants who've never had or have lost contact with a trusted adult, this reminds them that they are now a member of the Operation Flinders family and they're not alone. Over 300 young people benefit from this program each year. The South Australian State Government and many generous benefactors support Operation Flinders in funds and in kind in the form of goods and services. And of course, with more support from government, corporations and individuals, they could assist so many more kids and extend their follow-up support for participants too. My own particular Flint Operation Flinders challenge was to abseil down a 30-metre cliff for the first time. I experienced how reassuring it was to have instructors who were reliable and protective, and how supportive it was to have a team at the bottom of the cliff encouraging me down. It wasn't easy, I'm afraid of heights, but I was surprised and then exhilarated that I managed to do it, and it gave me a taste of what Operation Flinders offers to those kids who really need it. I'd like to thank the indefatigable CEO of Operation Flinders, John Shepherd, and the many people at Yankinina, from cooks, drivers, instructors, officers and all the others, including Brenton, the pilot, who looked after us so well on our visit. For those of us who'd like to know a bit more, Operation Flinders has its own website and I've also written a blog about my visit with some photos attached. But there's one more thing I will add. While I was visiting Yankinina Station, there was another much more special visitor than me, and it was Poe of Poe's Kitchen fame. Poe was there to actually experience the trek with a group of, uh, of the young participants and she didn't um, cut any corners, she actually experienced the highs and lows and in the process uh, one of her programs was made which will be airing on ABC TV on Tuesday the 9th of October at 8pm. I understand from what I heard that it was a challenging experience for Poe but one that in the end was extremely rewarding and I'd encourage people to have a look at that program to get a better understanding of how Operation Flinders operates and the transformative experience that it can offer to the young participants, not to mention the uh, celebrity chefs that take part in it. Thank you, Senator Wright. The Senate now stands adjourned and will meet again on Tuesday the 9th of October 2012 at 12.30 p.m.